Uh, Paul Beckwith again. So a consortium of uh, organizations in California and actually across the U.S. Um, led by the USGS, the, the United States Geological Survey um, or Service, um, came, uh, they modeled what would happen uh, if we had uh, conditions of atmospheric rivers crossing into the U into the west on the west coast of the U.S. into California on a more or less continuous basis for a number lar large number of days in in 1861 1862 there was a mega flood it was 45 days of almost continuous rainfall it filled the central valley with water up to about 15 20 feet caused enormous damages then but it would wipe out uh short term it would wipe out about a quarter of the u.s uh food supply um, because uh, the Central Valley is about 1% of the agricultural, uh, the whole agricultural area in the U.S. Um, and uh, it would be inundated, it would be submerged, and it produces about 25% of, of the U.S. Uh, crop. Okay, so I'm talking about the uh, scenario, a scenario by the arc storm, so-called arc storm scenario, atmospheric river, a thousand year event storm scenario and I was talking about that you know basically you know everybody in California is aware of wildfires aware of these um, you know the big one right the earthquake you know on the San Andreas fault you know 8.0 or something but people are not aware of these mega storms and the frequency of occurrence of these mega storms because of climate change is more like 35 to 65 years instead of the previous 100 to 200 years. And, uh, you know, this would cause huge catastrophic uh, economic and, and uh, agriculture, well, damage to, to California's agriculture, which feeds a lot of the U.S., but also the economy, you know, talking Silicon Valley, talking, uh, yeah, it would, be, it would be catastrophic. It's the other big one. It's more likely than the big one, the earthquake. The arc storm would be a statewide disaster. There'd be extensive flooding in the California Central Valley, so San lead in, and outlets to San Francisco Bayshore, San Diego, Los Angeles, and Orange, count, Orange Counties, co some several coastal communities and various riverine communities around the state. It would affect all California counties and all economic sectors. Okay, it would be an economic catastrophe estimated, even this estimate, which is a 25-day event as opposed to the 45-day event. And 45 isn't the longest, by the way, isn't the worst. In the 1800 years prior to 1861, there were six mega floods that were much worse, uh, much more, much higher intensity uh, times duration. That, that product was much, much higher. These were much bigger storms, six of them, you know, one every 300 years. And if you take storms the size of the 1861, there were three events, so, so something happening every couple hundred years. But then climate change, like I say, has, in, has increased the frequency of those events by a factor of three. 25% of buildings in the state could experience some degree of flooding in a single severe storm. That's 25% of the buildings in the whole state of California. Only about 12% of California properties insured, so millions of building owners would have limited or no ability to pay for repairs. It would threaten California with a long-term reduction in economic activity, raise insurance rates statewide, perhaps nationwide, and more. Okay, now this storm is not just plausible, but it's inevitable. Such storms have happened in California's historic record so the 1861 to 62, but this was not a freak event, not the last time the state will experience a storm and not the worst case. Six mega storms occurred that were more severe than the 1861 to 62 event in the last 1800 years. Okay, it's just a matter of when, not if. The arc storm is to some extent predictable. Unlike for earthquakes, we have the capacity to partially predict key aspects of the geophysical phenomena that would create damages in the days before an arc storm strikes. Okay, uh, enhancing accuracy, lead time, and the measures would act to somewhat mitigate the effects. 
The California flood protection system is not designed for an arc storm-like event. Okay, the level of protection varies in California. Um, some places are protected from flooding on that it's, it's uh, 75, one in a 75 year event, others every 200 years, but not against these atmospheric rivers. And remember just in 2017, the, there was a dam in California and it looked like it was about to go and that would have had a 30 foot wall of water going through the Central Valley if it had failed. Planning for arc storm would complement planning for earthquakes, okay? Um, so there are a lot of planning done in California, and, uh, but it's the arc storm is, is a riskier event than a major earthquake and would have far-reaching implications across the entire country. So I think I'm going to show this video, this arc storm video, since I have time. It's three minutes long, I believe, so let's, let's uh, play it here. California, 1862. It has rained for almost 45 days. Fierce storms have inundated a 300 mile length of the Sacramento and San Joaquin valleys with water. In Southern California, the flooding has drowned thousands of cattle and washed away homes, food crops, and vineyards. The state is bankrupt and many communities have been ruined and will take years to recover. Research shows that this is not the only big storm of our past, nor the largest. While the Great Flood of 1862 may no longer be in living memory, a storm of this scale is inevitable once again. This is the arc storm. Winter, present day. Weather reports show atmospheric rivers of moisture forming in the tropics, growing larger and gaining speed as they travel towards the west coast. The state braces for the impact of the coming storm, but the public at large does not comprehend the extreme danger the storm poses. The arc storm slams the coast with a fury rivaling that of hurricanes, beginning a process of destruction that will last for weeks. Levees and flood control systems are overwhelmed by the incredible volume of water that has nowhere to go. Widespread flooding occurs throughout the state, severely affecting Sacramento, the Bay Delta, Los Angeles and Orange Counties, San Diego, and many other communities. Over the course of the storm, as much as 10 feet of rain falls. Thousands of landslides occur, damaging homes, highways, and roads. Property damage approaches $400 billion. Much of the total loss is uninsured, so large numbers of building owners do not have the financial resources to pay for repairs. After almost a month of continuous rain, the storm finally subsides, leaving many parts of the state flooded for months to come. How will society deal with the social, economic, and environmental consequences of this tragedy? Together, we can prevent the arc storm from becoming a major catastrophe. How could our government agencies work effectively with one another to create emergency response and evacuation plans so that instead of victims, we would have survivors? What if we could prevent the inundation of major communities through creating more advanced flood controls and levee systems? A heightened level of readiness is essential to averting this potential catastrophe. After all, preparedness is part of our civic duty and obligation to society. To learn more about the arc storm and about how you could be part of the solution, go to www.arcstorm.com. Okay, so um, interesting little video clip. And uh, this was from about uh, 10 years ago. Okay, so I do, I do want to talk briefly about uh, yet another paper. This is from the ASCE, which is the American Society of Civil Engineers. 
Okay, so this is anticipating the environmental and environmental dash health implications of extreme storms, the arc storm scenario. So first I'll show you some images here. Okay, so this is California. This is the inundation region um, as modeled by the arc storm, which is 25, uh, 25, can I, um, it's a bit too large to, but anyway, I'll leave it at, at that. So you can see the inundation here and then it, in the Central Valley. Now in 1861 to 1862, this entire Central Valley was filled with water, like an enormous lake, larger than Lake Superior. Sacramento was under 15 to 20 feet of water, but all of these other regions also got flooded out. And through some of the valleys, the water went and flooded regions of San Francisco and um, also Los Angeles, et cetera, okay? So this, is a, this isn't a hypothetical thing. This happened before. It's going to happen again. Um, there were six events uh, in the 1800 years prior to 1861 that were even worse than the 1861 event. Okay, and in this central valley, it's 1% of the farming area of the U.S., but 25% of the food. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a disaster when, when it happens. This is rainfall amounts in different regions, et cetera. So that's the first figure. And, uh, you know, there's images of flooding in various cities here. And then this is table here I want to show you. So this is the idea. This is... These are the different regions of California, and this is physical damage to the environment from various things. So debris flows and landslides in the elevated sloped regions, okay, not in the flat regions. Um, physical damages from erosion, sediment transport, and deposition, also, you know, landslide regions, coastal storm surges, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and other areas of the coast. Contamination um, from the built environment, road debris, mercury, sulfides, asbestos, that's uh, from mining, natural uh, minerals, and also homes that are inundated, sewage components, petroleum fertilizers, all of these nasty things. Uh, valley fever would become a big problem in lots of the valley. Gastrointestinal illnesses, West Nile virus, right, sitting water, There'd be lots of molds and, and so on. So this is kind of like a risk assessment. Okay, um, but let's, so some of the key things here are, you know, what they did here is they modeled, um, they, they, they looked at the point sources and distributed sources for lots of these things, like the, from the oil industry, mercury, asbestos, persistent organic pollutants, molds from the water sitting there, pathogens. In 1861, when the water inundated, so the water, you know, the rains fell over 45 days, and then it took months and months and months for the water to, to drain off. Like it took, you know, up to six months in some regions. So houses, you know, one-story houses were, were sitting under the water for months, and the water, you know, there'd be wind and waves whipped out, whip, whipped up on the uh, lake, right? Um, Lake California, whatever you want to call it, the, the, the Central Valley Lake. And uh, it would then, you know, eventually the buildings would, would just collapse or be knocked over by waves, etc. And then all of their components would contaminate the soils and, and uh, things. <clears throat> Not so much then, but now there'd be huge contamination in the riverine and uh, coastal ecosystems, coastal cities would be affected and so on. Okay, so there's a lot of details on the arc storm modeling um, and, uh, you know, how they model it compared to what happened in 1861. And then um, I'm not going to go through all of this, but, you know, mixed point versus non-point and uh, contamination areas with uh, large rainfall, 100 to 400 millimeters per day, with the landslides, the mines, the, the waste, the uh, petrochemical industry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of details on the storm, how it, what, what, how it would manifest, and the damages that it would cause. So again, Google this and have a look at it. It's great, great stuff.
Okay, thanks for listening.